Hi, I'm Leif Stavmo, product developer at Guideline. And these are 3D Plus compact shooting heads. They are ready to go and you just hook them up together with one of our shooting lines, either the coated floating type like our TSL 2.0 or a flat monofilament type. Compline 2 will be a good choice here. The front ends only need to have a tapered leader, either a fluorocarbon or a monofilament attached to them. And there is no need to use any kind of extra interchangeable tips on the front ends of these lines. They're perfectly okay with just the monofilament or fluorocarbon tapered leaders. I must say that they are really cool lines. They're super fun and easy to cast. They generate high line speeds. They're stable in the air. They're powerful enough to turn over pretty wind resistant and bulky flies. And because they're short, they also require only a short casting stroke when you make them fly. That in itself is a big advantage when you're placing D loops behind you because of the short length and the short stroke, it doesn't take up much room. So you can use them in areas where you have quite limited space. I think also that I can guarantee that you will cast these lines further than you ever thought possible with lines of this length before. Summing up all these features that this line has, I can say that they are a great all-rounder and they lend themselves perfectly well for you as a beginner as well as those of you who are advanced anglers. Here are some tips for optimizing the performance of your line. Let's take a look at the overhang. Overhang is the amount of shooting line you have between your rod tip and the end of your shooting line when you're casting. This is determined by the casting style you have, the rod you're using, and also the line weight that you're loading that rod with. Now this line and also all other lines have a certain sweet spot where they perform at the very best. So you need to determine that sweet spot for yourself. I would recommend that you start by using about 30 centimeters, which is about one foot outside the rod tip. And if you find that doesn't work perfectly, you can lengthen that length up to maybe two feet, 60 centimeter at the most. But I think you will find that most casters will have about 30 centimeters outside and that should make the line perform at its best. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of shooting lines and how you can combine them together with the 3D Plus compact heads. Now, if you're fishing a smaller river where distance isn't important, but you find that presentation and good leader turnover are key, I would recommend to use a coated floating shooting line like our TSL 2.0. Now for my single-handed fishing to line weight 8, 9, something like that, I would use the 0.70 millimeter thickness, which is equivalent to 0.028 inches. Above that, for single hand switch and double handed fishing, I would choose the 0.80 millimeter version, which is equivalent to the 0.031 inch. Now for fishing and casting where you need a little bit more distance, I would choose a flat monofilament type, which is a thinner type of line and uh, Compline 2 is a good example of that. Uh, if we talk about my single-handed fishing here, uh, for the lighter stuff, I would probably go for the 35 pound version, but I would pretty quickly step up to the 42 pound version for heavier single hand, for switch work, and for double-handed work up to maximum line weight 7, 8. For anything above that, I would use the 50 pound version because that still offers low friction enough, but gives me a little bit more line to manage through the fingers. And uh, especially when you're casting fairly long distances, it's easier to manage these slightly thicker lines when uh, you have so much line laying around you on the fingers and in the water. So leaders and tippet also play an important role in how your rig's going to be balanced, how it's gonna fish and how it's gonna cast. As I said earlier, the 3D Plus compact heads are designed to work perfect together with tapered leaders. Monofilament or fluorocarbon doesn't matter. 
Interchangeable tips are not needed on these lines, but if you want to, you can add a polyleader uh, of five or eight foot length in various densities and just add a piece of tippet on top of that polyleader. It's really hard to make kind of like a general recommendation for exactly how long a leader you should use because there's so many variables that matter. You have the type of line you're fishing, whether it's a float or a sink 257, your leaders would look different. The size of fly, the weight of the fly, and also the distance you want to achieve, if that's important, then your leader also plays a role. For my own fishing, if I'm fishing these lines and I'm fishing them in the float and the float sink versions and in the single-handed version of the line, I would typically use leader lengths of 9 to 12 foot and vary them a little bit depending on the fly size. Now on the other hand, if I'm fishing these lines in switch and double-handed configuration, I would go up and probably fish 12 foot to 15 foot in length instead and also there it varies a little bit with the line size and the conditions I said. If it's windy, I have a headwind, I shorten the leader. If I fish the sinking lines, the intermediate 4.6 or the 257, then I normally just use tippet material straight off the spool, take off one and a half to two meters maybe, and just rig that loop to loop straight to the front end of the line. Now by keeping the length here short, I ensure that the fly is going to be dragged down to the desired depth when I'm fishing together and with the fast sinking front end of the fly line. Now this isn't the greatest rig to cast, but it does fish really well and catches fish and that's what very often matters. Now here's a casting tip for you. These lines are very short. And especially when you're fishing with the longer rods, let's say the 13 and the 14 foot versions in the double hand, you may encounter some problems in actually creating a good anchor on the water that sticks there very well during the whole loading phase of the forward stroke. Now the reason for this is normally because the length and the distance from the rod tip down to the water surface is so large that it doesn't really allow this short line to create a big enough D in the backward stroke and in the D loop phase. You can help that by actually tilting your rod to the side when you're doing the in swing and backward swing. This will decrease that distance and making sure that the line itself shapes a better D when you're throwing it in behind the rod tip. Now by doing this, you create an anchor point that's going to be flatter stick better to the water surface, give a better load in the rod and make sure that you get a good nice forward stroke. Now I hope this information that I've given you on these lines is going to help you create a good qualified decision on whether these lines are the correct choice for you or not. And with that I wish you the best of luck.